Good morning once again. The big story this morning is the uh, filing of bankruptcy by the New Orleans Archdiocese. Uh, Archbishop Gregory Amon is insisting the new bankruptcy filing will not affect individual parishes, schools run by religious orders or the ministries of the church. In part, the Archbishop said this morning, these are his words, I along with a team of advisors believe that reorganization will create an opportunity for us to renew our commitment to God's people and the New Orleans community by restructuring our financials and creating a path forward in hopes that we can continue and strengthen our core mission, bringing Christ to others. He went on to say, again his words, I strongly believe that this path will allow victims and survivors of clergy abuse to resolve their claims in a fair and timely manner. The filing by the Archdiocese comes as it's facing millions of dollars in costs tied to clergy sex abuse cases and economic hardship from the COVID-19 pandemic. Duke Carter is joining us live outside the Archdiocese office with more on that. Duke. Hey, good morning, Eric Paulson. Yeah, the filing only affects, according to the Archdiocese of New Orleans, the filing only affects the Archdiocese's administrative offices, and the Archdiocese's action will not affect individual churches, parishes, their schools, schools run by various religious orders or ministries of the church. The Archdiocese and other institutions will continue daily ministry as usual. Again, that is in that same letter that Eric just mentioned, where you get those quotes from Archbishop Gregory Amon. I want to show you all some video at this time. Now, according to our partners at the time speaking you new orleans advocate archbishop amen gregory amen met in person with over 100 clergy members at saint francis xavier who were informed about that decision and again they are still planning to minister to their parishioners and operate in a relatively normal fashion now nola.com reports churches are still expected to hold mass and schools will continue to teach children and legal analyst chick foray says that filing for bankruptcy uh gives the archdiocese 120 days to get their assets in order without creditors forcing them to pay. And so in a statement, we've also learned, according to our partners at uh, Times Speaking New Orleans Advocate, payments from the parishes coupled with other fees were expected to generate more than $16 million of their $45 million budget for the year ending in June. In prior public financial filings, their assets include an endowment that last year stood at $306 million. Those documents also listed about $77 million worth of land and buildings. And as of last year, the Archdiocese said it put aside $8.5 million for potential claims for abuse victims. So we're going to have more on this story coming up in the 7 o'clock hour, but for now, reporting live in front of the Archdiocese of New Orleans headquarters, Duke Carter, Eyewitness News. All right, thank you very much, Duke. Our Channel 4 legal analyst, Chick Foray, is following this case with us this morning. He is joining us by phone with some more perspective. And uh, this was quite a shock for a lot of people when it was announced yesterday. I don't think so, Eric, really. I mean, anybody who has followed, for the general public, it might have been a shock, but for the court observers who have been following the litigation, I mean, they, those are sub potentially substantial claims that have been brought against the archdiocese. And remember, there are many archdioceses throughout the country that have done this exact federal bankruptcy mechanism, used this mechanism, that is Chapter 11, to declare bankruptcy. So, yeah, to the general public, it's, it's a big surprise. But to the people who have been who has been following the litigation, it was not a surprise because it was certainly a legal mechanism that was always on the radar screen of the archdiocese. Well, let me ask you this, Chick. If it weren't for the COVID-19 crisis, do you think this would have happened anyway? Well, Eric, let's go back to the proverbial straw that broke the camel's back. That's exactly what this is. There's no cash flow. And in any bankruptcy, uh, you are an entity who is operating day to day, and you may have substantial uh, liabilities. And you may have substantial assets, but if your cash flow is cut off and you don't have any means day to day to operate or to pay your bills, Chapter 11 was designed for you. Chapter 11 was designed for a situation just like this. The cash flow of the archdiocese was cut off. They're having trouble with their day to day bills. They know that they have these potentially substantial litigation costs and maybe even judgments if it ever comes to that so for the archdiocese to resolve itself of all these obligations the best way to do is go into a chapter 11 which is a reorganization and it's not a chapter 7 right. as randy had talked about earlier chapter 7 is you put all of your assets and your liabilities into a pot and the bankruptcy court liquidates and distributes that's not what this is 
this is a chapter 11. For any folks out there, any Catholics or folks who are following this very closely and are very concerned about the archdiocese, don't be. This is not going to affect the day-to-day activity of the church, as the archbishop said just a few minutes ago. Uh, if and when masses are allowed, it, they're going to take place. If, uh, whenever the pandemic allows for the normal activities of the church to return, whether it be the Catholic schools, those are going to happen. This is not going to shut down the archdiocese of the city of New Orleans. And check this quickly, if a, I can, if I can, we're, we're running short of time. I want to ask one other question. Uh, what does this mean for some of the victims? The archbishop mentioned that in his statement that the victims will get fair treatment. What does it mean for them? The, their cases are now going to be controlled by the bankruptcy judge. They bank, the bankruptcy judge will determine whether or not those cases move forward, if they move forward, at what capacity they move forward. And they are definitely, in my legal opinion, in much worse shape than they were in yesterday. All right. That's uh, sad to hear for them. All right. Thank you very much, Chick. Uh, we'll be uh, covering this story all morning long and get uh, more opinions from you coming up later. Thank you very much. Eric, just one, one final comment. We're all going to become experts in bankruptcy law because of the pandemic. The pandemic. This is going to be the straw that broke the back for many businesses yeah. and many individuals. Yeah, undoubtedly. All right, Chick, thank you very much. And Eric just mentioned this bankruptcy filing also impacts survivors of clergy sex abuse. We heard Archbishop Amon mention them in a statement saying, I'll read it again, I strongly believe that this path will allow victims and survivors of clergy abuse to resolve their claims in a fair and timely manner, end quote. The bankruptcy temporarily stops lawsuits seeking compensation. We spoke to abuse survivor Kevin Bourgeois of SNAP New Orleans, an acronym for the group Survivors Network of those abused by priests. This is not about money. Survivors can never ever be compensated uh, financially for being sexually abused and the cover up of that abuse for decades afterwards. Okay, that's the critical piece here. And the benefit to the Archdiocese of New Orleans is that what I'm afraid of is any kind of petty, current and, and pending litigation, they're gonna keep these records under seal. At some point, a federal judge will appoint a trustee, form a committee of creditors, and examine the archdiocese's assets and liabilities to see how this will directly impact pending cases. And we'll get a chance to hear firsthand how the archdiocese is dealing with the matter. Later this morning, our Paul Murphy will sit down with Archbishop Amon to get more insight. That one-on-one -on -one meeting is scheduled for 11 o'clock this morning.